Okay, today we are going to build the PVC frame for our quad cycle. This is made out of inch and a quarter Schedule 40 PVC and various joints including T-joints, cross joints, elbows, and 45 degree elbows. And uh, we are going to test fit everything first. Cut it all, put it together, test fit it before we actually do a glue up. And I've got a couple of tricks when we get to the glue up that uh, I'll be showing you so that we can make sure all the pieces are aligned properly. But doing a test fit of the entire frame assembly prior to doing any gluing allows you to correct any errors, make sure everything is aligned correctly, is square, and uh, make sure that all the pieces are in the right orientation. Okay, so we have here 10 lengths of Schedule 40 inch and a quarter PVC, 10 foot long, and a single length of inch and 3 eighths uh, fencing, chain link fencing top rail, which we'll be cutting up to use as stiffeners at key locations. These are the basic four types of connectors. You have a T cross connector, you have a, a 45 degree elbow, a 90 degree elbow, and a T connector, all for inch and a quarter Schedule 40 pipe. And we are going to be using uh, PVC cement that is uh, heavy duty, dries clear. Uh, you can also use Gorilla PVC cement, which has a little bit longer set time. And of course, you also want to make sure that you have the primer uh, to make sure everything is clean. Now, when you do the joints, you actually want to take a little bit of sandpaper and sand all the connections first so that you make sure you get a good adhesion and that you're relying on shear with the adhesion, not just a slip joint. Okay, so one of the keys to building this is that we have a symmetrical system. So if you're cutting one rail for here, you want to also cut the other rail for the other side at the exact same length. Because everything is going to be equal on both sides, since we have, so we have two of each. Exceptions to that are going to be the center rail up here at the dashboard, this top rail up here, and this top rail up here, but ev otherwise everything else is pretty much equal. Uh, and then your lateral pieces down the center are going to, of course, be um, lateral pieces down here across the center, are of course, going to be um, their own length. All I want to do is take a look at the front end a little bit closer here. So we have a main cross beam here, we have a bottom cross beam, and even though in the CAD drawing it's a little off uh, alignment here, this cross T goes directly into this elbow, and then this is going to be our spindle that our wheel will attach to with a top cap and the bottom flange, and that's going to be held together uh, in a compression fashion with the bracket that we'll manufacture later. Okay, so we're going to start by building this top piece and the front rail here. So what I have done is I have measured and cut my two top rail pieces and put the fittings on. Now what's important to know here is that um, we want to make sure that we're not using glue yet and we are press fitting and making sure that the PVC is all the way inserted into the fittings. Uh, and that we have a nice flat level work surface that we can uh, work on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble, uh, cut and assemble the rest of the pieces. Now the sleeves uh, inside, when we have two couplers that are close together, what you want to do is take particular note of uh, the depth inside. So if I look inside of this here, you'll see there's a little ridge line in there. And so uh, you want to measure that. And it really depends on who the manufacturer of your fitting is. In this particular case, I have an inch and an eighth on this cross fitting uh, inside. And uh, when I get into my 90 degree elbow, I also have an inch and an eighth. But what, however, when I get to my 45 degree bend, I'm only going to have an inch and a sixteenth. Um, so you want to make sure that you have a good idea um, what you're looking at. And the fittings that I happen to be using for my T-fittings 
actually wound up being an inch and three sixteenths. So uh, you have to take that into account when you're making all your measurements and cutting. So what I'm doing is when I'm cutting is I'm actually writing the length of each piece on there so that I know and then what I'm going to do eventually when I go back around to make sure everything is complete I'm going to take my sharpie and I'm going to draw a line all the way around and then I'm going to draw another line across and I'm going to put a uh, mark on here whether it's a letter or a number whatever system you decide uh, so that I know that this piece of PVC goes into this coupling and those lines will line up and I'll also know the depth so when I'm gluing everything up it'll uh, work really nice and tight. Okay so as an example I cut these little uh, stub pieces here that since I have an inch and an, uh, an inch and three sixteenths inside my T fitting and an inch and an eighth in my 90 degree bend that means I have an inch and five or two and five sixteenths of an inch collar it's actually going to fit down deep inside and I press fit and then I'm going to press fit so that I make sure I have it nice and snug and so um, when I come back in I will make sure uh, I'm gonna, you, know, you can use a rubber mallet or a piece of 2 by 4 don't use a metal headed hammer to tap anything in place because you will definitely damage um, the the PVC. You have a chance to split it, particularly if you're doing this while it's cold outside. PVC becomes a little bit more brittle. Uh, so I'm going to rack up the other four of these, here, or the other three of these here, uh, to start to build the front of our bike. Okay, so here I'm putting in the bottom rung. And what I did before I attached it to here is I actually assembled this cross member first. So I have my cross pieces, my T, and then I can go ahead and line it up and assemble. Otherwise I would never get it lined up correctly. So again, I'm gonna use a rubber mallet to and now there we have the front assembly of our bike so if we come back over and we look at the CAD file you can see we have assembled this, this, these cross pieces, and so then what we're going to do next is we're actually going to cut these rails here, build these T's, and then put in this piece and this piece. And again, since we're doing uh, a symmetrical, these two and these two over here will actually wind up being, if I zoom out a bit here, this is going to be the same, the same. So I'm going to build this whole sub-assembly first and then attach it into here. Now I got to remember I got this cross piece here that I added. So I got to subtract that out from this bottom piece here. But otherwise, I'm going to have four, uh, three pieces that are the same with this height, which is equal to this height here. And uh, kind of go from there. So... We'll see what that looks like when it's done. Okay, Dad, let's get this started. Okay, it's always good to have a good helper. All right, so now we have uh, put together our side rail sub-assembly mm -hmm. and put it in. Here's a couple of things to keep in mind is that you're going to have one, two, three pieces that are the same this fourth one, however, that goes into this cross piece is actually shorter. Uh, that's something you're going to want to measure a couple different times. Make sure you have the measurement correct, uh, you know, so that you know that the subassembly is all going to be nice and square. And so uh, we've assembled it. And also, you're going to want to assemble this center T section first with 
all of the subrails before you put it into the end rail down there. And then you're going to want to add these pieces. And what I've done is I've, I've put in my little stub in between here. And now this one actually is slightly longer so that I maintain the same height. I have a total of six and a half inches between here and here. So between the underside of this piece and the top side of this piece is six and a half inches. So I want to make sure that I stay six and a half inches. So this little coupler piece here is actually going to be slightly longer. And we'll cut those and then that subassembly will be done. Okay, so now we've put in our first upright. And what we have to do now is put in our cross beam that runs between here. So again, if you come back over and you look at the CAD drawing, what I'm talking about here is this piece right here. And so we have put in this piece. So we're going to measure. Now this is going to be a little tricky to put in, uh, but you know we've got enough flex in this upper cross piece that we should be able to get it in once it's cut, which is why I haven't put in this top piece yet. So this top piece will go in next, but I want to make sure I got some flex in here so I can get this long uh, stretcher in here. This is going to help give some rigidity uh, and stiffener for the steering wheel. Okay, so now we're going to put in this stretcher here. We're going to center it in that hole. Give it a little twist. And because we've got some flexibility in this...